Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to ask to hand over to Sister My Triplets, Sister Ed. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. So we are so thankful to God for this wonderful Sabbath day. This is the sequence of our program this morning. Our song service has been led to us by our song leader. And after my part will be the special music from Sister Lay and Brother Carlo. And after which will be the promotional talk by Brother Fan. Then the mission story will follow by Sister Jewel. And our Sabbath school lesson will be discussed by Sister Bandi. Then the closing prayer by Brother. So our song leader this morning is no other than Sister Memory. And this is your presider, Sister X. I just want to share a text from the Bible about uh, Sabbath. In Mark 2, 27 to 28, it says, The Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Wow. Amen. She gave us a verse about the Sabbath, and we're going to sing about the Sabbath. That's our opening song. I'm going to ask that we all sing loud, loud, wherever we are, and praise the Lord. Amen.
Mr. Memory will also have the opening prayer. Oh, I'm the one praying? Yes. <laughs> okay, let us pray. Our mighty God, Father in heaven, always, Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, for this day that you have given us, the day that we get to sing praises to you, to spend time at your feet, Lord. We are asking, Lord, that you bless us as your, as the church members of your church, Lord. Uh, whoever is going to take part, all the participants, we're asking, Lord, that you anoint their lips so that whatever comes through will be coming from your throne. And as a church, Lord, may we grow in faith. May we grow in love. May we be exemplary in whatever we do, our conduct, may it always be Christ-like. And whatever we learn, may it draw us closer to you and help us to have a good relationship with you. We pray and prepare us for your second coming. We, pr we pray all this in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Memory. Uh, let us ask Sister Lay and Brother Carlo for the special song before Brother Ben will have his emotional talk. Little flowers ever worry when the wind begins to blow, and they never, never cry when the rain begins to fall, though it's wet and oh so
Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Lei and Brother Carlo. So this is the time for us to listen to Brother Fan for his promotional talk. We can't hear you, Fem. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I was just testing things. <laughs> okay, wait first, there we go. But you did see the screen, right? All right. Okay. Uh, today we will be learning uh, three vital lessons. Actually, this is five, but I think five is too long or a lot, too many. Okay, three vital lessons from the life of Moses. Okay, so we know that after the death of Joseph, uh, the new Egyptian pharaoh did not know anything about Joseph, right? And then that new Egyptian pharaoh made the Israelites their slaves. And Moses was the man chosen by God to deliver his people out from bondage. And God mightily used Moses to write and compile the first five fundamental books of the Bible. Now, a quick and deep look at the life of Moses will reveal a lot of lessons to learn. He is also the man mentioned in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter, okay? And studying his life would show us how to live a godly and righteous life. So I am inviting everyone to join me as we learn the lessons from the life of Moses. This is just a few of the many, many lessons that we can learn from Moses. So lesson number one. God uses the humble, not the proud. In Numbers 12, verse 3, it says here that now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Now, what would you feel if I say, or if somebody will say that about you? Oh, Sister Memory is a very humble person more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Oh, Sister Ayesa is very humble, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Oh, Brother Jepo is a very humble man, more humble than anyone else <laughs> on the face of the earth. What would you feel uh, if somebody will say, say that about you? Now, the Bible records that Moses is the meekest man on earth. And because of this, God chose Moses to be the physical leader of the Israelites. But how did Moses develop this kind of humility? What are the circumstances that led him to be humble? Hmm? Let me share a quote. True humility is finding your confidence in God rather than in yourself. Again, true humility is finding your confidence in God rather than in yourself. Now, Moses has grown to be very popular among his people, right? He was so popular that even some historians could say that he could even lead the Egyptian army. And not only that, but Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. You can find that in Acts 7, verse 22. 
With all these attributes, it is very easy for Moses to gain the illusion, you know, being so grand and become proud in his own eyes. Now, unfortunately, God cannot use Moses in this state. God needs to humble Moses before he can use him. So, we know what's the next story. He killed an Egyptian. Moses became a fugitive and fled to Midian, and there he became a shepherd. As days turn to weeks, weeks turn to months, and months turn to years, his confidence in himself started to fade away. Little by little, the proud and mighty Moses became a humble and meek shepherd. Now Moses learned a lot during the 40 years he spent in the land of Midian. He learned to be loving, caring, and most importantly, humble before the sight of God. And though he became a fugitive, God used his circumstances to turn his life around. And Ellen G. White wrote in Patriarchs and Prophets, Infinite wisdom called him who was to become the leader of his people to spend 40 years in the humble work of a shepherd. The habits of caretaking, of self-forgetfulness, and tender solicitude for his flock thus developed would prepare him to become the compassionate, long-suffering shepherd of Israel. So instead of finding confidence in himself, Moses found confidence in God. And now Moses is ready to be used by God. Lesson number two, God will fight our battles for us. Now imagine this, okay? You're part of the Israel. You're part of the Israelites. You just got out of Egypt. On your right side, angry waters that might kill you. Your group, and on your left side, angry army that might kill you so it's either you die by drowning or get caught work hard to death and wish you died by drowning what would you choose <laughs> so in exodus 14 we can read here the story of when the israelites were about to cross the red sea Suddenly they beheld in the distance the flashing armor and moving chariots betokening the advance guard of a great army. As the force drew nearer, the hosts of Egypt were seen in full pursuit. Terror filled the hearts of Israel. Some cried unto the Lord, but far the greater part hastened to Moses with their companions. Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. So the joyous deliverance of the Israelites has quickly turned into complaining and murmuring. But they have lost their sight of the goodness and the power of the Almighty God. So instead of trusting God, they blamed Moses from bringing them in the wilderness just to die. God never loses a battle. The question is, which side will you be standing when the dust finally settles? Now, is the situation familiar with you? Hmm? How many times have we found ourselves in the same situation that after miracles and miracles and proof of god's power in our lives we still come to the point wherein we still ask god why why did you do this why am i here why i don't know we still doubt god no we can't really blame the israelites for this because well they're just human after all, but what Moses says next must be deeply buried in our hearts and minds because he says, do not be afraid. 
Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never, you shall see again, no more, forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You can find that in Exodus 14, 13 to 14. Now, everybody knows this. Presidents, celebrities, powerful, high-ranking people, all of them have bodyguards around them in their houses, in their mansions. They have security cameras and everything else just for them to feel that they are safe. But look at us. Hmm? We have God, the all-powerful, almighty, supreme ruler of the vast universe, as our personal protector, like a personal bodyguard. Yeah? And he has promised us that he will fight our battles for us. Okay. And the last one, lesson number three, developing a personal relationship with God. Like any other faithful men and women, Moses had a very close relationship with God. Now we need to realize that it is impossible, okay? It's impossible to be faithful to God if we don't have a close relationship with Him. Now in order for us to really develop a strong relationship with God, we are expected to totally surrender our lives to Him, 100%. And this means every part of our being. We need to be ready to follow the perfect will of God in our lives. So when we develop a close relationship with God, all things will fall into its right place. So like a man courting a lady or a lady courting a man, if that's a thing, we need to be strongly interested in knowing God. Okay? Our relationship with God will never grow without spending time with him we can spend time with god through prayer bible study we talk to god through prayer and god talks to us through bible study the most important things in life are really not the physical things no not how rich you are or how many houses you have how big your house is what kind of branded apparels you wear what car you drive no the most important thing in life is our spiritual relationship with God. Because this will surely make our lives worth living for. At the end of the day, nothing else will matter but how close we have grown closer to God. Moses is no doubt a man destined to deliver God's people from bondage and slavery. God humbled him to the point that he became the meekest man on earth. His life teaches us vital lessons that will not only benefit us physically but also spiritually. So let's pray to God that he will grant us wisdom and the courage to apply these lessons in our daily lives. Thanks so much for listening and God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that inspiring message, Brother Fan. So let's have the mission story from, uh, by Sister Jewel. Hello, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay. Um, our mission story for this Sabbath is, uh, I just to share to you the story about a young man. A young boy, his name is Bakani. So 
yeah, because we have uh, some uh, small kids here in our Zoom. So I prefer this one and I hope you will, you will be inspired by this story. Let me share it to you. How to become a fishers of men in just a small age or young age. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Amen. Fishers of Men Bakani is in the fifth grade and lives in one of the remotest cities in the world. His home is Akaluit, a city of only 8,000 people in the Canadian Arctic. The city is so remote that it is located on an island without any roads or trains connecting it to the rest of Canada. In winter, the waters of Frobisher Bay freeze and ships cannot sail to Akaluit. In winter and summer, the best way to travel in and out of the Kaluit is by airplane. The city's name The city's name, Ikaluit, comes from a local word that means place of many fish. Ikaluit received the name because it has been a traditional place where the native Inuit people have gone fishing for thousands of years. Even today fishermen still catch fish in Frobisher Bay. Bakani loves fish and other wildlife. He believes that God created the world and everything in it, including plants, animals, and people, in six days, and then rested on the seventh day. But he heard another story at school. Teacher told the fifth graders that the world was created through a big bang and people evolved from animals. Bakani cannot understand why some classmates doubt that God created the world. How can the whole world, people, animals, and plants come from an atom, he said. It's not possible. I believe that God created this world and everything in it, including us people. He continued, there are also some people who think that we as people came from monkeys or baboons. This again is not true because God created us. There is no way we can come from animals. When are we going to see people coming from animals again? When Bakani plays with his classmates, they sometimes ask how he can believe in a creator God whom he cannot see. We cannot see God, so how do we know that he is alive, his friends say. Bakani has an immediate answer. He asks a question of his own. You have never seen your great-grandparents, he replies. So how do you know that they once lived on this earth? Bakani wishes that he could tell his friends more about God. He tries to love them in the same way that God loves him. When classmates are unkind, he immediately forgives them. He reads the Bible nearly every morning and evening. He especially likes the Sabbath, when a small group of Seventh-day Adventists remember God's creation day of rest by studying the Bible together. His favorite Bible verse is Genesis 1, 1, which says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It is because of the verse that he does not believe what teacher teaches about a Big Bang and people coming from, perhaps, monkeys. In a remote place like Akaluit, there are no monkeys. But there is a lot of fish. After all, Ikaluit means place of many fish. Ikaluit has many fish waiting to be caught. Jesus told his disciples, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4, 19. Bakani wants to be a fisher of men. More than anything, he wants his classmates to know that God created them. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help open a church and community services center to share the good news about the Creator God in the Canadian territory of Nunavut, where Bakani lives. Thank you for planning a generous offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Juro. Now, before we will have our Sabbath school lesson, uh, may I ask everyone to share your testimonial, testimony, brother, <laughs> testimony about God's goodness this week. Anyone? 
I would like to share about my mom. Okay, I hope it's nice. okay. Um, actually, my mom is still very, very sick. But what happened during the week was very scary because she wasn't talking anymore and she wasn't eating anymore. All she was doing was sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. And that's all she was doing. So uh, when um, my father called me, then uh, we ended up now opting for medical missionary, which is like uh, the Sabbath way of healing. So that's what that is what she is uh, doing now. And uh, so the medical missionary prays for my mom first and then tells her what to do and so forth. And she's an Adventist. So I'm really, really happy for that. But there are slight improvements because now she's eating, which I am happy for because she's eating and she's talking, you know, she's talking to me and uh, She's not really walking because she's using, now she's using crashes because she said she was tired of sitting because she was always sitting or sleeping. So she's using crashes to kind of like move around, but just around the house. So I'm just thanking God. I believe next week we'll be having more testimonies of God healing my mom. Amen. 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 Who else? Mr. Ayesa, you'd like to share something? Sister Amy? Okay, so I think uh, we are good to go. So let's have Sister Bambi for the summary of our lesson, the Sabbath. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. So as I try to share my screen, who can remember the title of the lesson without looking at the lesson? Without looking, ma'am. Title of the lesson. I guess nobody remembers, so. Okay, so I believe that it is already shared and you can see it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the title of our lesson for this week is on the screen. It's the rhythms of rest. And our memory text, it's found in Genesis 2, uh, verse 3. It says there, let's read it together. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his works, which God had waited and made. So I would like everybody to uh, participate and, you know, share your thoughts and idea. And uh, I assume that you've read the... The, the the questionnaires and you know let's help each other to understand this message from the lesson this week because so that everyone will be blessed so you can hear me right okay so i i tried to I tried to look at the meaning in the dictionary, which says here, it, it, it is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. So this week, we will talk about the rhythms of rest. 
and to make a, a, a short preview, so uh, creation begin with, you know, an arid darkness and lifeless world, world. And then little by little, other things like air, land, and vegetation were created. And once the habitat was ready, God created the rhythms of the new world by placing several box, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Finally, life filled the world during the following two days. Then God created a unique form of life in his image with special care. And then, so I know that you've read this in the lesson, Ayesh and a woman, I don't know how to read it, Ish Shash. So, and he said that everything is very, very good. Okay, so let's go to our first question. So Sunday, uh, the title was Prelude to Rest. And uh, the question is, among God's creation, which gives meaning to the Sabbath. So I did not put the the the, the choices so that we can, you know, uh, brainstorm ideas and you know share. So who who would like to answer this? So among God's creation, which which gives meaning to the Sabbath? So uh Let's review first the, the, the creation story. So the first day, God created light, right? Heaven and the earth. I mean, huh? Heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Memory, can you like review to us the, the creation story? Okay, so what happened was that uh, in the beginning, it's, it's just plain and simple. God created the heavens and the earth, right? So that was the first day he created the heavens and the earth. So it then goes on, but then what, when it comes to the sixth day, that is when he creates man, which I think goes to the question that is the among God's creation, which gives meaning to the Sabbath. Because I, I'm looking at it like uh, the stars, the, the sun, they are not going to worship God, right? And the animals, yes, they are there, the lions, the elephants, but they're not going to worship God. But when he made men, men can worship God. For me, that gives meaning to the Sabbath. That is amen. the one. Amen. Humanity. Amen. Who can disagree with memory? So anybody who would want to share their thoughts about uh about this question <clears throat> anybody sister ayesa How about let's ask we cannot hear a yes I would. Oh, is she talking about something else? How about uh <clears throat> okay again? Again, a yes. Sir. Yeah. Can you hear me now, Ate Bambi? Oh, I was yes. talking and then memories turn off the microphone. Anyway, my answer is the same with memory because in the Bible says the Sabbath made for man. And uh the humanity are the one who give the Sabbath. So yeah. Humanity, people. Amen. Amen. So anybody who would want to add more on that? 
So I think we all agree that, you know, uh, Yeah, so I think we all agree with Sister Memory and Sister Ayesa. Okay, so if none, if no one would want to share, let's move on to the next <clears throat> to the next question. So it's on Monday. The commandment to rest. So the question here is what is the significance of the Sabbath? So what is the significance of the Sabbath for you. I think there it's, could it's, be, a reminder, you know, it's a reminder of uh, hmm. creation itself that, uh, you know what, in the beginning there was nothing and God created everything. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So the moment we are, we are giving significance to the Sabbath, we are recognizing the fact that God said, let men rest on this day. You know, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Exodus there about. So it reminds us of creation and the power of God and what he commanded us to do. Amen. Amen. So for others here, what is the significance of the Sabbath for you? Okay, so maybe I should call names. <clears throat> so maybe let's ask uh, Brother Jeff. How about Brother Jeff? What what is the significance of the Sabbath for you? The the importance <clears throat> of the Sabbath for me is uh, celebration. Uh, celebration that you know Sabbath is dated originally in the creation right so we celebrate that we are created we are given uh, so much uh, you know opportunity to see the world the beauty of the world and experience uh, God yeah, I think that that's all Amen and me personally, I believe that uh, Sabbath has a special blessing to give, you know. And as we, you know, as we go to, to church every Sabbath day, I know that everyone is blessed. You don't, uh, maybe some of us would just, would go to, to, to church and attend Sabbath with, you know, heavy hearts and, you know, burdened hearts. But it's somehow like give give us rest to like forget about them. So yeah, so Sabbath is a blessing for everybody. So anybody, how about Sister Jewel? What is the importance of Sabbath for you? You know, because we cannot just be here sitting down the whole day and there will there is no importance, you know? So there must be something about the Sabbath that we like set aside and is there a jewel? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, that's true, Sister Bambi. We shouldn't just sit down, right? It's not about rest. It doesn't mean that if you rest, you will just sit down, right? So for me, right. <laughs> uh, the, the significance of the Sabbath is to have a communion with our Savior, our Creator, our Redeemer. Amen. So thank you very much, Sister Jewel. So let's hear from the couples. How about 
Brother Carlo and Sister Leah, what is the significance of the Sabbath for you? You know, as a couple. Uh, for me, um, Sabbath is the sign of God's love to us because uh, God has given us the Sabbath for us to rest, not just physically and also spiritually and emotionally. So Sabbath should be like uh, reminders for us that God really loves us. Amen. Sister Leia. Very powerful. About Sister Leia. About Sister. Yes. <laughs> Same. It's like a reminder that there is a creation, and of course, there uh, <clears throat> there is a creator, and that creator loved us so much that he gave us this Sabbath to meet with him and to remember his goodness for us. That's all. Amen. Amen. Okay, so as, as the title of Monday's lesson, we are like commanded to really rest. And God specifically chose a day for us to, to rest, not just, you know, any other day. And that's why we are all blessed because we are uh, here this Sabbath, you know, sharing ideas and thoughts and the importance of the Sabbath. So maybe you cannot think of, of, you know, importance of the Sabbath for you, but all of those answers might give you now the... Can I just the... add something? Okay. Uh, th uh, thank you, Sister Bambi. You know what? Um, some people will ask, it, it just suddenly hit me when Sister Bambi was commenting. Some people will ask and say, you know what? Sabbath to you is Sabbath Saturday. But for me, Sabbath is Sunday. For me, Sabbath is Monday. How do we explain that? And I remember listening to a sermon uh, that explained this uh, situation that if people ask us ever in our lives, why Saturday? Why, why not my Sabbath is Sunday? My Sabbath, I can decide my Sabbath is Tuesday because, because if, for example, the Lord hallowed it, right? And then if people invite you, let's say for a party and they say, come on uh, Friday, and you say, okay, I'm going to go on Monday. You will not find the party there. So the Lord hallowed this day. The Bible actually says he hallowed it. And because he hallowed it, he blessed it. That's how we can answer that. It's very different from every other day to anyone who can have a question regarding this day. Amen. Amen. So I would like to share something. I remember the, the first time I came here in Thailand and... Uh, my school before was like they're doing uh, English camp on the Sabbath. And, you know, uh, it was actually not hard for me because the, the one that I, the previous teacher recommended me is an Adventist. But, you know, she told me just do like this, be there on Friday and, you know, just live. And, you know, I did not live. And it, it, I mean, because the place was like very far and I don't drive a motorbike. And, you know, so that was the first time I missed Sabbath uh, Sabbath for like, you know, I was a missionary for like five years of my life. And, you know, I, I felt really guilty. And the next Sabbath when I went to church, everyone was telling me, where were you? Where were you? And, you know, I ended up crying because I, I don't want to explain myself and the situation. Yeah, so uh, I hope that everyone would have that feeling that Sabbath is really, you know, time to, that we should hallow it, what Jesus did. So maybe this time our faith is like flaking and as we worship in at home, it's, it's like different. But, you know, let's try to like really focus because there's like a lot of, you know, you are tempted to just, oh, I'm home. I want to lay down while I do this, while I listen to someone who is talking online. And anyway, they don't see me. So, yeah, so those are the things that we have to, like, to think about and to focus on. So if you don't have anything to share, 
let's move on to the next question. Uh, wait, Sister Bambi. <laughs> oh, take it, Sister Brother Jeffrey. Um, I would like to just comment on the question of memo. Uh, we, as Seventh day Adventists, we believe that um, the Sabbath is the culmination of the work of, of God throughout creation, right? So that's why He has given us a rest day. Uh, he hallowed it and He sanctified it for us also to be able to do the same thing. Uh, the thing is, when people don't uh, don't follow and they claim that they believe God and yet they observe another day, it seems uh, it seems that um, the acceptance of the creatorship of God is not there. Why? Because God intended a Sabbath for for His people to rest on that day that he has created. So how come uh, other people would worship on another day in which, uh, because that's that's their way of how they do things or maybe they are available on that day, but it's not that God uh, wants them to do that because as we created beings, we are his uh, creatures, right? So, with that, we as we as creatures, we acknowledge that we have a creator God. And with that, uh, we observe the day of worship that he has intended for us to recognize that we ourselves are worshiping God, the one who creates us. So that is why we have this called uh, rhythm of rest. Why is it called rhythm of rest? Because we have every, when the Sabbath ends, after seven days, we will go again to another counting, counting down of another seven days for us to worship again. That is every, every seventh day, we have the seventh cycle, seven day cycle, and that is the Sabbath. That is called the rhythm of rest. So as we create, we creatures, we believe in God. We also have that same belief and faith um, that he is our creator and that we all worship to him on that day. Not and uh, not any other day. Amen. Okay. We can't really hear you, Sister Cheryl. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, Sister. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Amen. Anybody would want to to comment? Can I try, Sister Mummy? Okay, Kuya. Okay, what is the significance of the Sabbath? Now, now the importance of Sabbath is that for me, as I listened to the pastor of the 3ABN last night, it says uh, that uh, from the beginning, uh, creation from the genesis that uh he created the heaven and earth from uh from sunday up to friday and then or uh, from sunday to friday and then on sabbath he rested it doesn't mean that god was tired that's why he rested he rested because of the rhythm that he has to do like uh, he do this one on sunday monday just just what brother jepo said and also but like just what sister memo said God rested because he is not tired, but that is his rhythm. And he wants us to follow the rhythmic of his. Uh, we, we have to uh, rhyme also the, ryth the rhythmic of his rhythm that we have to do. He was to do this one on the seventh day, we have to rest. That is God's rhythm. That's why you have to rest as well. But not, that's not, uh, it's not that mean that God was really tired on that day. He just want us to follow what is uh, the rhythm. Because everything in this world is rhythm. When God created everything in this world, it is rhythm. And on the present also, God also show that Sabbath is very important. No? And also in the future. Even in the future, he mentioned, uh, let me check uh, first. Uh, he mentioned that here. <coughs> oh, that in the uh, in the present he showed that uh, uh, redemption, and in the future also he showed rede uh, redemption as well in Isaiah sixty six twenty three. So God made this Sabbath not only for the people, <coughs> but also for the uh, not only for Israelites, not only for the Jews. But to all people to come, that they will respect it uh, to the new generation, up to the new generation until the redemption, until the coming of God. He said, this is the Sabbath. And he only uh, hallowed it. Only one day, Sabbath. So you cannot, just like Mother Jupo said, you cannot worship on other day because God only blessed one day. And that is Sabbath. So from the past to the present, up to the uh, future, this is very important because he even in the, in the in the present he even wrote it on his own hand and made a covenant with us and in the future god revealed to us that on sabbath also uh it is very important until until redemption so the uh what they said brother japo and memo it's true and also sister <coughs> was this she, she, that uh it's good also that the Sabbath is very holy. We have to uh, give time to worship with him because God wants to uh, worship with us. He doesn't <clears throat> want to let sleep on that day. He rested because, as I said, the rhythm, the rhythmic, and the rhyme we should follow. Thank you, Sister Bobby. Amen. And Amen. Uh, here I have, I have, I, I would like to share uh, Sabbath and rest. So how should... How should I rest on Sabbath day according, according to Psalms 92, Exodus 16, 29, and Isaiah 58, 13. So here it says here, praise God, speak to others about God, sing to God, rejoice in God's creation, remember God's righteousness, find new strength in God, meet God along with his church, spend time with your family and friends, do not do your own will. Enjoy the Sabbath. And the last one is, then you will find uh, your joy in the Lord. So everyone is right. And, you know, if, uh, if uh, we have our own differences on how do we want to celebrate the Sabbath, but 
uh, let's make sure that you know it will spend it is a well spent Sabbath with the Lord. So let's move on to the next question. Tuesday, new circumstances. After forty years of after forty years of wandering in the wilderness, the new generation was at the border of Canaan, ready to possess the land. Then they had been exposed to God's presence through the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night, the sanctuary, the manna, and the Sabbath, and finally the Ten Commandments repeated in Deuteronomy 5. So question, what is the implication of these experiences for us who are at the brink of the heavenly Canaan? So are you following me? So what do you think is Uh, what what is your suggestion of these experiences for us who are at the brink of heavenly Canaan? Can anybody who would want to help me with this question? So let's ask Brother Jeffrey. Oh, Brother Fem is here. Let's ask Brother Fem. So what do you think of, what can you, what can you share about this question? What is your suggestion of this experience for us who are at the brink of heavenly Canaan? No, wait first, wait first. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I would simplify the question, Sister Bambi. Okay, thank uh, you. In in, is, in essence, on the experience of the people in Israelites, uh, right? Um, mm, is keeping the right. Sabbath, is keeping the Sabbath uh, could save us? Could I? Yeah, is keeping the Sabbath could save us because... Um, Okay, Kuya. I think his question okay. is is keeping the Sabbath going to. Uh, Jeff is asking a question. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, oh, yeah, I, think, I think it's a different because question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, we will deal this one first. What is the implication <laughs> of these experiences for us who are at the brink of the heavenly Canaan? Um, yeah, let's, so, talk, let's talk about first the Israelites, okay? When, when they were traveling towards Canaan, uh, we know their story. Uh, they are a hard-headed person, and that is also the same with us. Uh, we can apply it, same implication to our experience today. We are also hard-headed people. Uh, in their experience, they, they were provided with um, clouds by day. Imagine they're living in a desert. They're traveling in a desert. Right? Imagine how hot it is. We, we could even imagine ourselves in Samar here in Thailand. It's so hot. How much more in their time they're traveling, walking towards uh, Canaan and it's desert. So it's so hot. But then God provided them a, a pillar of clouds by day. And during the night, God also provided a pillar of fire so that the the coldness of the night cannot, imagine the desert, if it's hot during the day, it's also very cold during the night. So God provided them those things so that they would uh, feel comfort during, during the day. Mm -hmm. And what makes it very interesting is that God provided them food. They don't need to work. God provided them, God provided them with manna that will fall down every day. And that the thing that they, they will do is just to collect it every day. And more interestingly is that during the, uh, we know the story, during the, the sixth day, they will, they will get double mana so that the following day, they will have a meal for the Sabbath. And that's how God is really good to, to them. Now, let's talk about our journey towards heaven. What it implies to us in our, in our time today. 
The question is, did God provide us um, shelter during the day? Yes. Yes, God provided us with homes. Did God provide us protection during the night? Yes. yes. God, God sent his angels to us. His protection is all over us. Did God um, leave us hungry during our stay here on earth as we wait for him? Oh. No, every resources are available to us. In, in the time of the, the Israelites, it's desert. That's God. That's why the, the manna falls down from heaven. But in our time today, we are covered with vegetations. We are very fortunate that we have different kinds of fruit and food. We can even have steak. We can even have fried chicken. Unlike in their time, it's manna only. Right? So that's how... God is really good in our lives. But then, the question is, are we good enough co compared to the Israelites? The answer is no. We are, we are the same hard-headed person. Why? God provided us everything. But yet, sometimes we forget the Sabbath only that God has asking us to observe. Sometimes, um, we get a portion of the Sabbath. Like sunset Friday afternoon, we still... Do something, and I, I and I agree with with myself. I am I I am admitting that I am I am admitting that I I did also like getting a portion of the Sabbath that God has given. So uh, this is we are in the brink of going to heaven, but uh, the message is that I think we have to change our lives, our lives, not your <laughs> life, my life, our lives. To, to really cling on and focus on. You know, uh, I will just cite an experience. To, uh, yesterday, I really posted a uh, heartfelt, uh, heart uh, sorrow of my feelings because relatives died, friends, family died. And it's so heart heartbreaking knowing this August is a, a, a month of mourning and sorrow for us. My uncle died. My Lolo died, my, my grandfather's brother, my, my wife's Lola died, her auntie died, my two aunties died the next day, and yesterday is the burial of my, my cousin's husband. So these things are happening, it's so, August is so sad for us. But then this is a message for us that soon, soon, when Christ will come, he will wipe every tears in our eyes. And that we should always remember that only the Sabbath that God has instituted for us to remember, to hallow him, and forget about those worry things because he will comfort us. That's all. Amen. 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 So anybody, I think that was well explained. So do you want us to go back to what Brother Jeff, what, what is Brother Jeff's question again? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brother Jeff. Actually, my question is really different. I just realized. I'm sorry. Uh, so to further my question is keeping the Sabbath or any other laws could save us because this will help us how, you know, to how to keep the Sabbath. Amen. Okay, so let's, if nobody would want, anybody would want to share. If none, let's move on to Wednesday. Another reason to rest. So here in Deuteronomy 5.15, sorry, sorry, Sister Bambi. Sorry, Sister Bambi. Sorry, Sister Bambi. I think Brother Jeff asked a question. Who, and I was actually thinking about it. Like, who keeping the Sabbath take us to heaven? Or any other commandment? I think which is a question oh, that you. many people out there might have. And they do not have the answer. Okay, so you can answer it. Can I try? Okay, Kuya. Uh, keeping the Sabbath won't, won't let the people be saved. As we know already that only Jesus can save us. It's uh, it's uh, already it's written also in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians that we cannot boast that, oh, I do this one, I did this one, I keep the Sabbath. No. Following the Sabbath is, is just like God implemented for us so that we will have rest. 
and to worship with him and to pray with him. But the Sabbath, he made it holy because he know it. He knows it already that if just like what happened in France before the Prince uh, French people, they they made like oh why we should listen to this uh, seventh uh, resting day. Why we should have it the uh, tent? They did it as what Pastor said. Like uh, the, the French people tried it. Like ten days they worked, they worked until people get sick and died, and then they go back to okay, let's go back to the seventh day because God knows already that our body need rest before He made us. But this Sabbath cannot save you. Only Jesus can save us. Okay, thank you. Amen. Can I can I also add? Thank you, uh, Elder Oro. I would like to add something. If you have a relationship with God, if you have a relationship with God, what is faith, right? Uh, is believing in God, right? And if you have faith in him, it's a, it becomes natural because it says, if you love me, I remember in John uh, 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. If you, are, if you have that relationship with God, you know that God has said, for example, you have your boyfriend, right? And the boyfriend says, oh, you know, uh, this is what we are going to do, or it's a marriage, right? This is what we do. We are going to maybe go to the museum or whatever you've agreed on. But you keep on saying, no, no, no. If you have a relationship with somebody, you you just uh, like follow to show them that you love them. You know, you follow to show that you love God. So if you love God, God has said, keep the Sabbath day. It is God's instruction. He has said to, to us, it, we are not forced. It is up to us to keep the Sabbath day holy. But it is what God has said to us. So if we have that relationship with him, if we believe that God really is the creator of everything, then we will keep the Sabbath day. We will actually, it will come automatically to us. We will not kill. We will not, you know, all those things will come because we have a relationship with him. Does it, will it take us to heaven? I think it's part of it. I think it's actually the whole package of everything really. Because when you are like, uh, when you are born again, when you are baptized and everything else, you're believing in God. It becomes part of the whole package that you do not want to kill people. You do not want to covet your neighbor. You do not want to worship other gods. So it's really part of the whole package. That's what I see, amen. 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 So uh, going to church on the Sabbath is a part of, you know, achieving that salvation that God is offering us. So anybody would want to add on that? Can I add some more, Mommy? Okay, go yeah. I remember what Brother Carl messaged last time, last Sabbath, that the shepherd listens, hear the voice of his master. Our shepherd is Jesus, so we follow. Jesus rested on the Sabbath day, so we have to follow. And uh, according to the uh, the Bible, uh, he said, like, I am the truth, the way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it's very clear that the Sabbath cannot save you, but because we are uh, the sheep of God, we are God's people, we follow him because he is our shepherd. And then Sabbath cannot save us, but uh, it can identify, it can, uh, I don't know how the word, I forget the word is like, it will identify us that we are the children of God because we listen to his voice. Thank you, Bobby. Amen. Anybody? Okay, if none, Wednesday, another. Sorry, Ayasa friend. would like to add. Ayasa would like to add. Okay, sister. Um, yeah, I would like to say something. So because there's some like an exemption, right? Because like the question is like, is keeping the Sabbath <clears throat> like the way to go to heaven, right? Or in another does. But the, the Bible says like, this is the love of God, to obey his commands and his commandments are not burdensome. So it's like, yeah, just like what memory said, it's part of it. But there's some like an exemption or situation like, for example, like, I newly like I was I'm newly baptized like during the weekdays and I died before I was able to keep the Sabbath. Am I going to like go to heaven when Jesus returned? Yes, you know, because 
I the salvation is about accepting Jesus as your personal savior. But the thing is, the question is, if you have the chance to keep the Sabbath and you did not keep the Sabbath, like as you live, then that would be the problem because the Bible says is this is the love of God to obey His commands and His commandments are not burdensome. So yeah, that's my answer. Amen. Okay, anybody? Sister Memory, Baba. do you want to say more? บาบาค่ะผมมาจังคําแสงครับได้ค่ะอ๋ออ๋อแคนยูโกแบ็กซิสเตอร์แบมบี้ฟอร์ดเดอะพรีเวียสโอ้โหยเดอะเควสชั่
That is why Moses, just before he died, he started reminding the people. He did not want the people to forget the Sabbath. And remember, it even says uh, God has to remind his people to keep the Sabbath day. In the same sense, what is the implication for us today? We have to be reminded always to keep the Sabbath day. Always we have to remember to keep the Sabbath day holy because sometimes we take it for granted, you know, like uh, we, we, we think uh, because of so many things, because of technology, we are now free to do this, free to do that, but are we keeping it holy? Are we, uh, what was the word that Cheryl used? What was that word that, I uh, can't remember, but it was in my head. Quality like, time. Sorry? Yes, it should be solemn. It should be, it should be happy at the same time, right? But we should have that uh, sense that it's different. It's not from any other day. It's not like what we would do any other day. So whatever we do any other day, we're not doing it on the Sabbath. We are worshiping. Our focus really should be on Jesus Christ. It should be on God. And if we look back, we've already been given an example of the Israelites, how they would keep the Sabbath day. Even Jesus himself kept the Sabbath day. And you know what is amazing? The Sabbath will be kept in heaven. That is one thing that is stated in Revelation. It will be, which is the, what the pastor said, it will be kept in heaven. So it serves as, as a reminder, we are reminded as well right now that we should keep the Sabbath day holy. And if ever we ask ourselves, what is it that we should do or not do? Let's pretend or imagine we're in heaven. How do you think would keep the Sabbath day? How do you think God would want us to keep the Sabbath day? If we can answer that question, that's how we should be like, amen. Amen. So I know that we have so many reasons to rest on the Sabbath and maybe this Sabbath, we, there's something, you know, add up on that uh, reason. So anybody who would want to add on this question? Uh, Ayasa wants to add. Okay, sister. Um. <laughs> How do I start? <laughs> yeah, the implication is for us to remember because people tend to like the tendency is uh, people are very forgetful. You know, that's what happened in the Israelites when they were in Egypt. But yeah, as we remember that their situation were difficult there. And yeah, so Moses were trying to like tell them, telling them like to remember the Sabbath because they might forget it. And, you know, as we observe the Ten Commandments, we, when we read it, it's like, thou shall have no other God, thou shall not kill, thou shall not covet. But the first word it, for the Sabbath is remember. So it's, it's, it's like kind of like sp special. So because God knows that uh, people are so forgetful, easy to forget things. So and the rules and what to do or what not to do. So, yeah, we should always remember to keep the Sabbath holy. That's it. Amen. Anybody? Okay, sister. Uh uh. Amen. Sister Bambi, can I just... Okay, uh, Kuya. Uh, deal with the question also. Um, in the, what is the implication of this concept for us today? Uh, we, is, there's another reason for rest. Uh, we, we know that the Israelites, 
were liberated from their slavery in Egypt. Uh, I mean, uh, let's deal with the first one we discussed about uh, how we worship the Sabbaths because we, we honor the God, the creator God, right? We, we acknowledge his creatorship to us. The second one is the, the redemptive act of God to the Israelites. That's why um, they were liberated from their slavery and they were brought um, to Canaan. And the first uh, Ten Commandments was written in Exodus during their travel going to Canaan. And now they are settling down. And again, it was uh, being mentioned again in Deuteronomy that the Ten Commandments was repeated again. For what purpose? And that is to remind again the Israelites that um, people, as we are, we are forgetful and we have to remember always the commandments of God. That, that is why it's, it was repeated, not only during the journey of the Israelites. I know that some of the Israelites were not able to enter to the promised land, the old ones, and now there are new generations. And you know, they already forget some of the concept or the uh, or, or the promises that God has given. So it was um, being given to them again for the second time. But how about in our time today? What, what concept can we imply in our situation now? We are now, we are not traveling towards Canaan, but we are traveling towards heaven. Let us always remember why we worship the Sabbath. It's because we are redeemed also by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. So first we have to remember our creator uh, who created us and the second one is to to remember the redemptive act of Jesus on the cross in our behalf we are not traveling now just like the Israelites we are being saved by Jesus Christ on the cross and that's why we have another reason to rest and that is because we are redeemed by Jesus Christ amen amen, amen. time time sister Bambi okay so let's move on because we don't have time can I add a little bit, please? Okay, Sister. I, I agree with uh, Brother Jeff. Well, can you go back a little bit, uh, Sister Bambi? It's uh, like, um, I think it's besides God being our creator, um, he He brought them out of Egypt, right? He He saved them. He redeems them. And the last part is uh, um, that they became a new creation. There's like restoration. You know, we can see that he restores. So besides like creating, he saves we can see that he redeems them and also he restores them. So I think it's like a reminder that God create, redeems, saves, restores us as well. Amen. And Oh, my mom wants to add another piece. Oh, my mom wants to add another piece. Oh, my mom wants to add another piece. Oh, my mom wants to add คือเราจะต้องรักษาไว้ในวันสบาโตในเยอรมีบทที่ห้าสิบแปดข้อสิบสามอ่ะเพื่อให้ให้รักษาไว้อ่ะเยอรมีอิสอิสยานะห้าห
So when he rested on the Sabbath, he wants people to rest not because he is tired, but because he wants to follow. The people will follow him. And we as shepherd, uh, as we are the sheep and he is the shepherd, we follow the shepherd. And uh, that's why we have to rest as we, are, uh, as we follow the rhythmic of God's creation. That's my answer, Sister Bambi. Amen. Anybody? Okay, Ate. Amen. Mr. Bambi, can I? Okay, go ahead. Uh, there is only one creation week that God has created. Only seven days, right? So, uh, let's talk, uh, let's uh, talk about the rhythm in music. Uh, as we, uh, some people who are singers are good in music, uh, we know the rhythm by, by beating our hands, right? By, by have the beating in our hands. And we know when, when is the best time to have the high notes or hit the high notes or going down the lower down with our hands. So it's the same also with, with the days of the week. We, we, we have the rhythm, when is the best, when, when, do we when, when is the time that we could have to lower, uh, lower the notes or lower the beat of, of the week. You know what? Um, when when it is Friday, we Adventists would really feel sigh like ah a sigh of relief like oh thank God because it's Friday, we can how end our work and we can rest. And uh, when after the rest, uh, we go back to another cycle. I imagine yourself if we don't have rest for the whole month. Do you think uh, our our lives will be happier? God has given us this day of rest so that all, all our body, our body will be revitalized and be regained for another, another week of labor again. And that's the beauty of resting with God. And thinking about no other things, God admonished us not to think of our work, not to think of anything, but only to focus our minds to, to worship Him only. And you know what? When Monday comes, we, we feel the rhythm again of. Uh, maybe that's the day that the loads are more heavier. And then we, we, that the following day, we, we find our rhythm to be like uh, somehow we adjust to the first day of work and then and so on and so forth. But it is so amazing when it comes to Friday. 
we feel a sigh of relief because we can now we we look we can look forward for another day that we could have our rest and that's the beauty of uh the rhythm of rest every seventh day every week after seven days sigh of relief and that's the reason why many establishments nowadays have one day of one day of um how do you call it um one day of rest day off uh, people are having day off in their work in a week so that's the the beauty of resting and so let's so uh, let's thank god that god has given us this rest so that our body could always could also be energized and god is giving us admonishing us to to relax and to worship him only not to think of anything else worshiping in the beauty of his holiness okay so i just read the message from the you know from the people who are in charge of the sabbath so i thank you for that brother Chapoy. so i hope that everyone would is blessed with our lessons to study this week and i want to read uh, a verse from isaiah chapter 58 13 it says here enjoy the sabbath then you will find your joy in the lord so Happy Sabbath, everyone. You can share later in the afternoon if you want to, you know, talk about this. And thank you for participating. And may God bless us all. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, our sister, for the lesson. I'm amen. going to ask that uh, we sing our song. I'm going to share it on the screen. Here we go. Thank you. 
Brother Oro for the closing prayer. Okay, let's pray. Our most precious Heavenly Father, we thank thee so much, O Lord, for this wonderful uh, gathering that you have given to us. Thank you for uh, sharing the thoughts and wisdom that we were able to share and be enlightened our thoughts and our mind to follow God. Thank you so much, Lord, for uh, giving us this uh, wonderful technology that we are now worshiping the Lord. And as we continue the divine worship, Lord, thank you so much for um, bringing us here to give us a good connection to continue our service. All of this we ask and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I think I'll uh, we'll have three minutes break first so that everyone who has uh, part on this divine service can prepare. Uh, let me read the participants first so that they can prepare. Sister Amy, Sister uh, Kiang, Sister Bambi, I think it's there, Gretchen, and Sister Honey. Okay, three minutes and then I will turn you over to Sister Amy to start our uh, singing.